And one key thing I've learned that's helped me embrace the challenges I've experienced. So a few months ago, when I started to put together this talk and started thinking about how I was going to condense 10 months worth of experiences and challenges and highs and lows into nine minutes, I started to realize that actually, there's a lot of similarities between the things that I've learned and, and how I've embraced that and the, the journey, for want of a better word, that I've been on. And actually the journey we go on as children moving from a baby to a toddler to a child. And this was particularly relevant to me because I have a child and my daughter Ivy is two and a half years old. And when I started to think about these similarities, I started to think about how she'd gone from this helpless baby to this very independent and stubborn uh, toddler right now. <clears throat> and when I was thinking about it, I started looking back at old photos and old film clips that we'd taken of Ivy. And there was one in particular that I kept going back to. And that was the one where she took her first steps. And the reason that I kept going back and re-watching this, obviously it was lovely, that's why I kept watching it, but also the thing that made her take those first independent steps was actually a licorice all sort. So after weeks and weeks of clambering around, tying onto furniture and holding our hands, what had made her let go and be more independent was a licorice all sort. And that made me think, what was my licorice all sort? What was making me go in every day to this job that was really quite difficult? What was make, what had made me 10 months before leave my really lovely job with a lovely team and I knew what I was doing and I was doing it well and everything was great? What made me think, hang on a minute, I'm going to go and work for LCBS, an organisation that whilst it's been around for 100 years has never proactively fundraised, it didn't know how to talk about itself, it got itself in all sorts of knocks because we're an infrastructure organisation, we support charities with funding whilst going for funding ourselves, and all that sort of messy messaging we had. And when I started to think about what actually motivated me, it was something that I had been doing <coughs> since I was a child, and something that had driven me as a child. And that was this sense of trying to tackle unfairness. And I was quite a precocious child, and I had a very clear sense of what was fair and what was unfair. And it used to frustrate the hell out of me when adults would say, well, life's just not fair. And that, for me, that wasn't a reason. I couldn't understand why someone was happy for that to be the case, why they were happy for something to be unfair. And that's come into really sharp focus since moving to Liverpool. I moved to Liverpool six years ago. I absolutely love the city. If you haven't been, you should go. It's amazing and I've, I've lived in lots of places during my life and Liverpool is definitely my home. It's been a great place for me to get married, for me to buy a house, for me to work and for me to start a family. And I know it's going to be a great place for Ivy to grow up. But the fact is, it's not a great place for everyone. Liverpool houses some of the poorest and most deprived communities within Europe. And that for me is deeply unfair that by accident, coincidence of post-COVID born, sometimes the street that you live in can affect the opportunities that you have access to and your ability to embrace them. And there's one statistic that we use in LCBS a lot that I think really um, is, shows this um, unfairness that exists. And that's in the last 12 months, LCBS through our partner organisations have delivered 54,000 meals to children and families who would be unable to feed themselves. 54,000 meals. And to put that into context, that would be like me giving Ivy three meals a day for the next 50 years. And that was over the course of a year. 54,000 meals. And that for me, that fact just shows how unfair life is for some people. And I realised that that's what drives me, that's my licorice all sort, that's what I want to tackle, and that's why I started working for LCVX. And I realised that actually this is something that we can take through to thinking about fundraising and, and donors, and, and when we're, we're talking about donors, if we can work out what their licorice all sort is, and we've got a packet of licorice all sorts, well, you know, then we're, we're already halfway there. And I know there's probably people sat in this room thinking, well, yeah, obviously you know that, you work out what the donor wants, and you give them that, and if you've got it, then, then happy days. But I think there's a difference between knowing it, and remembering it, and actioning it. And I, there'll be people in this room, and I'm including myself in that, who 
will know that their donor wants a licorice all sort, but actually are con trying to convince them of a fruit pastel. Because we're honest, it's not been quite what they're looking for, but it's, we've, we've tried to convince them and it's been a difficult relationship and we get frustrated. And I mean, I can even think of one example where actually I basically tried to convince them of a bunny rabbit. I mean, you know, I know what they wanted and, and I've tried to, to convince them to support something that's completely beyond that. And I think it's really important that we remember what motivates someone and we remember what motivates us. Because that gives us so much more confidence in what we're doing. It gives us much more focus and it gives us so the ability to be passionate about things. And I mean, obviously I've been awesome in all the jobs that I've done, but the ones that I think I've been most successful are the ones that have really, really helped me to address that sense of tackling inequality, tackling unfairness, particularly in Liverpool. And so I think when we, we think about how we work with donors and, and how the things that we consider and you know, stewardship and relationship and all these facts and figures and donor segmentation and things like that, and they, they're all um, fantastic and obviously they're you know, a lot of what I do in my role. I think as long as we can remember that key thing and keep at the forefront in our minds, actually what is it that motivates them? What is it that drives them? And that starts with asking them. And it's a really <coughs> simple thing, but I think a lot of times we forget, especially if they are donors that have been engaged for a long time, asking them what it is that would make them walk across the living room floor. Um, so finally, just to, to end my talk, um, I've asked some of the, the volunteers to, to go around and hand out some licorice all sorts, um, not just to get your, your energy up, but also I just want you to, to take one, and in the moment that it takes you to, to eat that, I just want you to think about actually what is your licorice all sort? What has brought you here today? What drives you to do what you do? What makes you work for the charity you do? And I promise it will give you so much more confidence and so much more focus in what you're doing that you'll find yourself standing on stage in the bar and talking about it. Uh, so thank you.